it gets asked a lot how much does it cost to turbocharge a K20 so I thought I'd do a little video on how much it cost me and the parts I've used uh, before I start this video I do realize that someone somewhere will have a mate that can do it for seven quid and make a manifold out of wheat of but that's not what I did so this is just how I did it and how much it cost me and these are good basic costs and basic parts none of these are particularly over the top or too expensive or elaborate um, the most expensive part is actually the manifold and the downpipe but we'll get to that in a second so first things first you need a turbo you can use any turbo you want really but you need to make sure it's a decent sized turbo because it's a 2 litre engine and the high revving um, I picked the GTX 3582R which is a dual ball bearing turbo it has a V band uh, exhaust clamp and that was £350 off of eBay I think I went for a point, yeah, I went for a point eight two exhaust housing, just so it lasts a bit longer with the ribs. Um, then you need a manifold and a downpipe. I got those from AH Fabrications. They made those for me. They were eleven hundred pound. Um, I very kindly got a tiny little bit of off cut for a screamer pipe off them, which is great. Um, I have remade that since though. So once you've got your turbo and your manifold fitted, you will need oil feed and oil return parts. Now the oil return, you need to weld or you can. So you can get a, a, a screw in one, but I did the welding one. Welding one onto your sump, so you need to take your sump off to do that. That cost me around, I think it was, where are we at? About £68 for the oil return. That's including a Dash 10 pipe kit, a universal pipe kit off eBay, which came with around something stupid like what, five metres of hose, various Dash 10 fittings, like 90 degrees, 45 and straight. So that, including the weld on fitting, £68. Then you need oil feed, obviously. Um, I used a 4AN feed line, which is a one meter universal line. I think it was from Mamba on eBay, something like that. And that came with a, a T-piece, which screwed straight into the pressure switch on the back of the K20 block. Um, and I also needed a one mil restrictor, because that's what the turbo told me that I needed and the information. So that was 42 pound for that. That's oil feed, T-piece, and the restrictor. Um, then, I needed a map sensor which uh, bolts straight into the standard throttle body. I got a Skunk 2 4 bar one which cost me £110. You also need a boost solenoid uh, which I used a Mac 4 part one which cost me £80. Then there is a dump valve and a wastegate. Obviously if you have an internally gated turbo uh, you don't need a wastegate because you have an actuator so you need an actuator but mine's an externally wastegated turbo. So my dump valve and my wastegate were genuine, they were fake teal ones from eBay, they were £115, I've had no problems with these of them as yet, so far they're good, six months are still fine. Um, then there is a boost pipe kit, obviously you need to get pipes from your throttle body to your intercooler and back to your turbo and vice versa. I used three inch pipe work because that's the size of the, turbo, the outlet on the intercooler I had. Um, the 3 inch pipe kit including the silicon joiners and all the clamps cost me £110. Then you need your intercooler. So I had 3 inch inlet and outlets. It's a twin pass intercooler because they both come out the same side. And uh, that cost me £120. And uh, what else did we need? We needed a weld on fitting for the air temp sensor because on like the factory intake pipe to your throttle body it has a little sensor. That's your inlet air temp sensor. You need that. So the um, Exo Racing it was that I got a well done bung from, £23 for that. Uh, then you need water pipes as well for your turbo. So, <clears throat> excuse me, originally where your water pipes come out of your rail, they normally have two pipes that go to your throttle body. Um, they go to like, um, it's like for cold starts, I think it is to run water through it, or is it hot start, I can't remember, anyway. But I've taken that off the throttle body, I don't use that setup anymore. So I've used those two pipes as my feed and my return from a turbo. I use 6AN water pipe, uh, 6AN pipe, uh, braided pipe as my water pipes, and also needed two banjos to fit on the side of the turbo for the water pipes to go to. So I use 6AN banjos as well uh, with banjo bolts, and all that cost me £60. So that was a universal 6AN pipe kit uh, with different adapters, and then two of the banjo bolts for £15 each. So £60. Uh, you also need larger injectors I use Bosch 1000cc injectors um, and also I use the little clip-on 
loom adapters so you plug them straight onto each injector and then you can plug your standard loom straight in so there's no wiring to be done that cost me 325 pound for the injectors and the adapters um, you don't have to do a fuel return setup that's entirely up to you I think it depends over a certain power level whether or not you need to do it or not. I decided to do it now so I don't have to do it later. So you need a fuel pump, which I used a Walbro. Uh, you need a modified fuel pump carrier, um, which you put dash six fittings in. Uh, you need a fuel pressure reg, which I use an AEM fuel pressure regulator. Then I need dash six lines from the tank all the way to the fuel rail. Then I needed an aftermarket fuel rail. I don't think you need them, but yeah, but you do actually come near return. So an aftermarket fuel rail as well and then an inline fuel filter so everything that's fuel filter pressure regulator fuel rail all the lines everything um, and the fuel pump cost me around 500 pounds then you need vacuum hose as well because obviously you've got to run all your vacuums that cost me six pounds about five meters for six pounds overkill didn't need anywhere near that much but that's plenty of spares and then also when you out your inlet manifolds you've got a vacuum for your I've got dump valve, then I've got boost gauge, and then I've got um, fuel pressure regulator. So I've got three vacuum lines. I didn't want to just T-piece them all in with little plastic T-pieces. I decided to buy a vacuum manifold, which is a unit like this. I'll put a picture in the bottom corner. And that cost me £22. It just looks a lot neater. Uh, also, due to the increased heat because of where the turbo is on these cars, at the back of the engine bay, and the bulkhead actually comes back up itself like that, which you'll know. Um, it's quite important to put a lot of heat shielding in and heat wrapping because these cars, <coughs> excuse me, they can set on fire. Um, I've seen it a few times and I've seen people burn through looms and burn through hoses and have all sorts of nightmares there. So what I did was I put a metal heat shield in front of all the brake pipes and all the bits of wiring that's on that bulkhead. So that sits between the bulkhead, there's the bulkhead there, I've got a heat shield there and then my turbo manifold there. So everything runs behind that to keep that safe. I've also just to be safe as well, I've heat wrapped the downpipe uh, with exhaust wrap. I've also heat wrapped the wiring loom with exhaust wrap and heat wrapped some of the water pipes with heat wrap as well, just to make sure. And I've also put reflective heat tape on various parts as well to try and keep the heat off them or keep it a little bit cooler. Cost me around £120 for all of that, which I didn't think was too bad. And if the car hasn't set on fire, which it hasn't yet, I'm, I'm very happy with that. It was money well spent. So that's all the parts that you need pretty much to fit your turbo and have everything sat there attached then you need an ECU to run it you can pick an aftermarket one if you want I went with the K Pro V4 because it's standard wiring standard loom basically a standard ECU with another board in it which makes it mappable so I went for the K Pro V4 that cost me £850 roughly um, then you need it mapped after that so budget in about another £500 roughly for mapping give or take depending on where you get it done so you've got your turbo, you've got your manifold, you've got your ECU, you've got everything done. You also need a decent exhaust system for the car as well. Um, I used a solid fabrication, super silent exhaust system, cat back with the centre box. It's probably quieter than it was when I bought the car when it was standard, which is quite frightening. Really, really quiet. Perfect for everyday use. And that cost me around £550. So not including the mapping, all the parts and everything that I've said there, comes to roughly £4,551. It's quite a lot of money. Uh, then you need the mapping. So you're looking at the best part, £5,000 from what I've spent and what I've done to have a mapped turbocharged EP3. Hopefully that's helpful to some people. So that's how much it cost me to do my turbo conversion on my EP3 on the K20. There are other things I probably would have as well like a boost gauge it's quite useful um, and also an air fuel ratio gauge is, is very useful as well uh, you can wire that up to the K-Pro I did a video on that elsewhere on the channel if you want to have a look at that and another thing that you really do need to upgrade is your clutch um, you've got to factor that in because it won't take 400 horsepower on a standard clutch for very long probably won't last very long at all so they can range in prices from around £400 upwards to about £1,000 depends on which way you want to go you can get a twin plate clutch if you want or you can just get like a paddle clutch most people seem to go with I can't remember the name of the company but I think it's a stage 4 paddle clutch which seem to hold the power and last quite well they're a reasonable price I think they're about £450 it's a good decent clutch for road care and it's yeah, so it is also worth considering trying to get a limb slip diff for your gearbox as well I fully recommend them um, I had one in my car so and it made a world of difference to putting a bit of power down and putting power down out of corners and stuff like that 
Whereas right now, uh, mine is quite a handful to drive. It pulls you left to right on the road, free will. So that's something I will be upgrading shortly is the diff and the clutch, just so it lasts a bit longer. So that was how I did my turbo conversion on my K20. If there is anybody that knows any other way of doing things that you think is better than the way I did it or cheaper than the way I did it or a different way of doing it that works better for you, please feel free to comment and add the comments underneath this video because it's great to help everybody out. Maybe there's some information and advice that other people need that I haven't provided that you could provide. It would be a great service to help folk out. So thanks for watching this video and I really hope it's been of some help to somebody somewhere because it does get asked a lot how much this costs and that is how much it has cost me so far. Still going to cost me more I bet. Thanks for watching.